para allá. Ni broma ni nada. Ok. Hello, Ross Developers. I, I think that this light is a little bit strange. And Alberto, can you please move the light a little bit? Because it's like it, I'm, it, look, it look like a, you know, like a, a vampire or something like that. Yeah, move it a little like that. But it, yeah. No, on the other side, the other way around. Let's see. Okay, more or less. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, yeah. So let's go. Yes. Uh, there we are. Thank you, Alberto. Thank you. Your arm was showing on the on the screen. So <laughs> thank you. So how are you doing, Ross developers? Yeah, it's been exciting because uh, the last two live classes were a disaster. So since the YouTube has changed the, the way to transmit, to, to create the transmissions, the live transmission, we have been suffering a lot in order to create the live class, not for the recorded videos that we publish in our YouTube channel, but for those specific live classes, we have done many tests and that, that's really a pain, especially if you don't have a Windows computer, that's the case. But anyway, today we are here, uh, we are excited to share with you a very, very interesting topic in robot navigation, which is about robot exploration. And I think that there are just a few resources out there talking about this problem and showing you with actual code how to make this work. Uh, today we are going to deal with that. You are going to learn how to do it by using some prepare already uh, ROS packages. That's it. So let me tell, let me say hello to the people on the chat. I can see here that is Tishin. Hello, Tishin. You were the first one here on the chat. Also, Jan Spice, who, he, who can wait. He can wait. Jan. Uh, and, Jan, and also you say that I look fine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, that's not the important part because we are going to uh, share the screen. So if the share screen works correct, that's the most important thing. Then we have Pratik. Pratik? Okay, Pratik, uh, nice to meet you. Hello. Also, Pierre. Hello. And uh, Annie, Annie Ruth. Hello. How are you doing? Um, and then Amin from Saudi Arabia. And Bureth from Cambodia. Nice. Nice. Never been there. I would like to be there also, uh, someday. And then Slim Joseph, okay, yo, 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 very nice, Slim. And uh, then Dilip, uh, he, who is, he, so Dilip, you were waiting for this class, yes. <laughs> and we planned to do it last week, but it was canceled. Uh, I'm sorry for that. And then uh, thank you, uh, Pratik says that uh, we should come to India. Yes, we should. This is also a country that I have on my list. And, and then, uh, I don't know, I will see if I have the chance. So in any case, if I visit India at some point in time, then I will let you know so we can organize something over there. Of course, this applies to any other country. Okay, So people from other countries, I'm so happy so that you are here. Oh, I, I love all the countries, so I'm not, I, I'm not really spe specific for some countries, so I, I love all of them. And uh, then I would like to talk in all those uh, countries. So if you have uh, an invitation for speaking in there, I'll be happy to be there. And then let's go. Um, uh, Annie Ruth says, you are welcome to India, sir. Thank you very much. So we'll be, uh, we'll be planning about that. And then let's go for the subject of today. So the first thing that we are going to do is to share the Russian. So you know that you are going to practice with me today here while watching this. So what I'm going to do is to share a link here on the chat. Then you have to click on that link and then you will get a copy of the documentation that we have created uh, for this live class, including the, the code, the simulations, everything. And you are going to launch this code with me. I'm going to show you, okay? Don't worry, it's very easy. And you don't have to install anything in your computer, not even raw. So you don't need to install anything. Everything is com contained and doesn't matter of any uh, of any uh, type of computer. So you can do it in Windows, Mac, or uh, Linux, and it will work. And Alberto, who is here, and he is having some 
bad time with the virus, I think. So sorry, I, we apologize for the coughing. And uh, Gianfranco, oh, Gianfranco, nice to meet you here. Sorry, I, I thought that I would ha we would have uh, lost you because of the cancellation of the previous event, but I'm so happy that you are here. So, guys, let's start because we have some work to do, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is to share the uh, uh, this screen. So let me share the screen here. La, la, la. Where, where is the screen share? Where, where was it? I don't remember. Okay, so let me see. Okay, so it's missing the icon for a screen sharing. So it's not showing here the screen sharing. Let me see here on the options. And uh, let me see, uh, okay, it's not there. I can see the chat, I can see the, all the things, but and the participants, the list of the participants also. And then about the sharing the screen. So it's missing here. So let me see if I can share. Okay, so I cannot share. So in the meantime, I, I find this. Let me share with you the link of the project. So uh, you, uh, I'm going to share with you the code of the project, this link. So here on the chat, let me put it there. Okay, there it is, the project for today. So what you have to do is to click there, and then it will guide you directly. So what are the next steps? And in the meantime that you are opening all that, let me find where is the uh, sharing button here. So let me see if I can find it. And uh, let me see, I cannot find it. Yeah, because there are no options almost here. So... Let me see, blah, blah, blah. Okay. This new version of YouTube uh, is very bad. It's very bad, really. Very, very bad. So um, then I hope that you can get the rush yet there. So let me know if you have any problem on the chat, okay? And in the meantime, let me explain you what is about this exploration subject that we are going to learn today. It's exploration. It's what allows a robot to move into an, into an uh, unknown environment. So uh, that the robot doesn't know the environment where it is moving around, and then it decides to move to certain points in order to explore and to learn about this environment. So what we are going to do is to use this skill about exploration to create the map of an unknown environment. So what we'll do is we are going to launch in one side the mapping algorithm. And then we are going to launch in another side the exploration algorithm. So the robot is going to go and move to different points where there is no map. And then at the same time that it's moving, the mapping algorithm will be mapping, mapping, mapping. So at the end, we are going to have the whole map of the whole area. And as you will see, there is the uh, package already in ROS that allow us to do that. So basically today we are not going to program anything, but to learn how to, uh, to, cre to manage those packages that already uh, are there. And that's very interesting because it allows us to uh, make and create applications for autonomous robots that are a lot faster, you know, because we are using those packages that somebody else has done and they do work. And then we can just take it and use it in the same way as, for example, we are doing with a, a computer, you know. So whenever you want to build a computer, you are not building all the electronics in the inside, but you buy the boards, you buy the memory, the CPU, and then you put in there. So the same concept applies here, but in terms of the software. Okay, and then it looks like we are still having problems sharing the screen. Let me know, are you opening the rushes without any problem? Let me know in the chat. So if you open the rushes, then maybe you uh, will see that it appears Appears a notebook with instructions about everything that we are going to do today and how to launch. We have included there everything for you. So you include the, the different launch files, the configuration files, 
and all the structure that is required in order to uh, have the whole system working. And at the end, we should be able to see how a simulated robot is creating the map and exploring the environment. It's quite nice. This is a work that has been created by Christian, Christian, who is one of the interns of, of the, the construct of our company. And he's doing an excellent job here in, at the construct. And he is helping me to create those life class notebooks so we, uh, we can move faster, you know. So between uh, the two of us, we are creating this. And also we have taken some uh, code and some uh, explanations from uh, a notebook, a project that was created by a company called Usarion. Usarion is a company that sells some small robots like this, Ross robot, that you can buy and use it for learning for how to program robots with Ross and then do some tests and learn the navigation, about navigation, object recognition, et cetera. So we have combined all this, uh, everything is public information, and we have created the Rush Act of today. And uh, let's see, because I'm starting to get out of uh, uh, <laughs> explaining things. Maybe I'm going to start to talk about cinema or something like that, I don't know, or the Big Bang Theory that I like very much, because I'm getting out of... Uh, of comments, so, uh, you know, and uh, about coffee also. But by the way, they have opened just here uh, at the corner, they have opened a um, new shop, about a shop, I wouldn't say, a coffee shop. Yeah, a coffee shop that uh, uh, is selling very, very nice coffee. So whenever you come to visit us in Barcelona, in Spain, then we can uh, bring you there and uh, have you uh, a very, very nice coffee, if you like it. And uh, that's it. So I don't know. Let me know on the chat if you are doing something with the Ranch yet. Let me see. Uh, I can see here. Ready for the Ranch yet for Jan. Dilip is ready to go. And looks like we are not having here the... Uh, Still, we don't have the. <laughs> we don't have. I can see myself here on the on the screen. Do you know? So here, you see, is there? So maybe that's an infinite an infinite loop that is generating. So um, ready also for a Slim Joseph. And uh, let's see. Still investigating this, and so I think that maybe what I'm going to do is to describe to you, even if you cannot see my screen, then I'm going to start with the project and you can follow on the project directly. Yo. Oh, no, no me digas eso. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what we are doing here. Okay, okay, guys, so uh, let's uh, start with the project now and let's uh, figure out in another moment how this works. So let's go. Uh, yeah, okay, don't worry. Thank you, Hon. Thank you very much. So uh, let's go with the project, okay? So uh, you have to, let me see if I can see the mission. So, okay, wait, wait a second. Okay, so guys, uh, you should launch the project as you have seen there. And as you know how to do it, it's very easy. If you have followed the instructions on the screen, you should see that there is a, an icon, a red icon on the project of today that says open. Just press there. When you press there, then you are going to see again another screen with more information. Just select open again, and then it will open after a few seconds. So it depends on your situation. And then after that, you're going to see that a Jupyter notebook is showing on the screen. Then uh, this uh, uh, Jupyter notebook explains about this class, and it's explaining what I mentioned to you, why it is important 
to become uh, to to have a robot to do exploration. And then the basic requirements are ROS basics. So you have to understand how to make ROS basics uh, stuff like uh, topics. What's the meaning of topics? Services, messages the typical things, and then a little bit about navigation. So you need to know how to launch a mapping, uh, a la a launch a mapping algorithm or the localization algorithm. So if you don't, I have included there two links for the courses where you can learn all this material. And we are going to use those concepts today here, OK? So it's mandatory to have that. Then what else? Uh, then here, let me see. We continue. Then the robot for today is the Tartarbot in a Summit Excel office. So let's start by launching the simulation there. And for that, you go to the top menu that says simulations. So you click there, and then you will see that there are many words there. But there, basically, there are two squares in one side. The first one is to select the wall that you want to use for the simulation. So you click in there, and then it will show a list of worlds that you can browse down. Select the one that says Summit Excel. So it's Summit Excel Office. You select that one, OK? By selecting, you are not launching the simulation yet. Okay, You have to press the button, start simulation, but not now, not now. Wait, wait. Now let's. Select the robot that we are going to launch a spawn into that wall. OK, so click on choose a robot and then move until Tartarbot. And there are many, many robots here that you can launch in there. So select the Tartarbot 2. You can also uh, search for the robot, type to filter. So in this case, select Tartarbot or just type. And then once you have the Summit XL and the Start about two, then press start simulation. And a new window will appear, will pop up. And waiting for Gazebo server, it is starting the thing. And after a few seconds, you can have the simulation there. So in my case, it's loading. And let's leave it there while it is loading. You know, the simulator is a little bit slow. So now, what we are going to do is to prepare a package. That where we are going to put all the launch files and config files that we are going to need in order to launch the gmapping, the frontier exploration, and also something that is called the move base. The move base. The move base is a system that allows us to, to that allows the robot to generate a path and make the robot follow that path while it is avoiding the obstacle. So I I lied to you. When I said that we are we are going to launch two types of nodes or two types of system, the gmapping and the frontier exploration. So there is a third one in the middle that is called the move base. Okay, and why we need this one? Because this is the one in charge of generating the map, the paths and making the robot move along those paths. So this one gmapping is for creating a map. Frontier is for deciding the goals that the robot has to visit. And the move base is the one in charge of creating a path from the current location of the robot to the position that the frontier has decided that the robot has to go. Okay, So that's the combination of the three systems in ROS that we are going to use today here. OK, so uh, let's continue with that. So for that, what we are going to do is to launch a terminal, a web shell in this case, because it's a shell in the web, but it's called a terminal. And then in, in the terminal, we are going to see uh, the, uh, we are going to create a package, a ROS package. So uh, go to the menu, Tools, and then open the shell. Select the shell. And uh, this is a terminal. A shell is a, also a terminal. And then you can see there, you can see there that there is a prompt. OK, so I'm keeping here with me the chat in another screen. And, and then I'm checking there. In case that you have any question, you can type it there. OK, if you get lost. Don't hesitate to put the question there. So I'm keeping the chat here with me, and I will try to answer. 
Okay, and I can see here that Bureth says that he's okay. Uh, Gufran, Ula, say hello, sir. New to Ross and learning a lot from us. Very good. Thank you very much. And by Uriel George. So, Ricardo, a little late. I have to start Ross the S. Yes, Viral, nice to see you again. Viral is a, a no friend of us uh, for, because he has been following our trajectory from the early beginning of the company. So, so very good that, to have you here again. So, Viral, go on the chat, talk up, up on the chat, and then you will see the link of the Roget of today. Click on there, uh, then open it. Okay, you know how to do it already. So let's go. And uh, I was on the point that we opened the shell and now let's go and create a package. You have, remember that in order to create a ROS package, you have to be at the Catkin workspace slash source slash SRC, I mean. Okay, so let's go. And then you know how to do this in Linux, okay? So go to this direction that, that is called Catkin workspace slash SRC. Go there and then create a package. Uh, this package, please call it like it is explained on the notebook. That is called Turtlebot underscore exploration. Okay, Turtlebot underscore exploration. So how do you create that? Very simple command. Catkin underscore, you have to type that. Catkin underscore create package. Then Turtlebot underscore exploration. And here we are indicating that it depends on Roxpy. Actually, we are not going to depend on any because we are not going to create any code, but you can put it for later, just in case that you want to modify this. So you will have added already Roxpy as a dependency, okay? but it doesn't need to. And then uh, let me see what's happening here. I have an error, file exists. Oh, file exists, okay, let me see. Let me see what is happening here. Okay. So, okay. So the thing is that I already created this uh, uh, this Roget, and then the code is already there uh, again. <laughs> okay. So today is the day of the all the errors. Very good. Very good. Okay. So uh, this uh, this. Tartabot exploration package is already being created there. So we are going to use it, how it is there. So I think it's going to be easier. So I'm going to just to follow the instructions. Then uh, in order to see that this package is there, let's use the IDE. The IDE is or already, uh, it's another, the IDE is a tool for uh, editing the code and seeing all the files in a graphical way. How can you open the IDE? Go to Tools on the menu of the top and then select IDE. Then a new uh, window will appear that contains this IDE and you can go to the Catkin workspace and then select Source, Open Source, and then you will see that there are two directories there. One is Startup about Exploration and the other one is Startup about Exploration Arbis. Okay, so the Tantam mode exploration is the one that is supposed that we should create here on the on this live class. Uh, but I already created and tested and everything, but I forgot to delete. So it is there already. So <laughs> you don't have to do the work now today. And I don't like this uh, because uh, the real way that you are going to learn ROS is by practicing. So you can read a lot of things, you can see the code and whatever you want, but when, it, when you are really going to learn ROS is when you are, are practicing and doing the code yourself and seeing what happens when you type something wrong and you have a mistake. So that's what we have, but that's what we have today. Uh, so that's it. So let's continue with what we have. Okay, let's try to do the best that we can. Then let me explain you what do we have here. In the talk about exploration, we have three directories. Let me know if you are not following, okay? Let me know if you are losing my explanation or it's not clear. So we have this uh, package, Turtlebot Exploration, that contains a launch, a param, and a source. 
Okay, and let's continue with the rest of the explanation. So what we have here is, as I mentioned, in, uh, as I mentioned before, is the frontier exploration package that we are going to launch. But before that, we need to have a robot executing the mapping algorithm. The mapping algorithm that we are going to use here is called G-mapping. Okay, so we have uh, we are explaining. If you don't know how to how to use the G-mapping and how to launch it and for what is this, G-mapping is the algorithm that creates a map when the robot is moving around an environment. Okay. You don't know more than that, and you would like to learn, then I have included there a link to a course that explains you exactly how it works and how to configure the G-mapping in order to make a robot, your robot, how to make it create a map. Okay, so basically, in order to launch the G-mapping, we only have to create a launch file. Why? Because G-mapping is already included into ROS. So you already have this installed in your ROS system. Then uh, we only need to create a launch file that configures the G-mapping for our specific robot. That's the only thing that you need to do. That's very cool because, I mean, the G-mapping algorithm is something quite complex. If you had to create it, that would be a nightmare, you know? So now somebody has done it there, and we can just use it by using a launch file. Then that's the first launch file that you can see on the notebook. And uh, then this launch file is called gmapping.launch and has to be included into the launch directory of the Turtlebot exploration package. So if you go to the IDE and check this file, you go to Catkin Workspace, Source, Turtlebot Exploration, Launch, gmapping, then you are going to see that this gmapping contains the code that it is on the notebook. Okay, so this is the launch file that is configuring the scan topic for Kubuki laser scan, and then the base frame for base footprint, and the odom frame for odometry, okay, for odom. And that's it. Basically, there are many other parameters there, but they, they are okay like this. Check on the documentation or on in the course that I have indicated for specific uh, learning about those parameters, what they mean and which values for your particular case, okay? That's not the purpose of, of this live class. So you do that and then you, you have this launch file there and now it's it's ready. It's ready to, to create a map. But before we do that, Let's launch, or let's configure now the move base, as I mentioned before. The move base is another package that is included into ROS, if you have installed. And then the move base allows us to move the robot to create paths. So we provide to the move base a uh, target location. And then the robot is going to create a path from its current location to that point. And then this move base is also in charge of moving the robot following the trajectory up to there, and also is in charge of avoiding obstacles. In case that something unexpected appears in the middle, then it's going to modify the path and then follow until it reaches the goal. Okay, so for that, we need to create another launch file. That's the one that we have here that is called move underscore base dot launch. That's nice, it's there. Then uh, what else? So we have there, this is the move base launch file that also you have to modify the parameters there in order to accommodate to your own robot. In this case, it's for the Tartalbot simulated on there, on the simulation. And it is already configured for it. But basically the most important, um, the most important parameters for now it uh, is the ones that are indicated as R name in the launch file. If you can have a look at the launch file, then you can see the autumn frame ID, the base frame ID, global frame ID, autumn topic, laser topic. Basically, those are the ones that are usually the only ones that you need to change in the move base, unless you have something special. Okay. So uh, then this is already configured for the Tartabot and also created there. So we have two launch files, okay? Gmapping launch file and move base launch file. Very good. So we need a third one. 
is the one of the frontier exploration to launch, actually, the, the one of these live class. And then uh, in this case, we had to create two configuration files. The first one is the COSMAP common YAM. And what is this? So this file is already created here where it is located. If you go to the IDE and then you go to CAT King Workspace Source Start about exploration, then inside another directory that is called param. Param, you open it, and then you will see that there are two files: the cosmap common.yam. And this is the yam file that configures the cosmap that the frontier exploration is going to use in the move base. Okay, so uh, this is very typical thing in navigation. So the move base uses something that is called the cost map. If you don't know what is this, then you have to go to our uh, uh, previous live classes where we explain this or on the courses that I have indicated there on the links about navigation. You're going to learn there very deeply because cost map is are the basis of the move base. So the move base has those cost maps that are a like the it's like a layer of obstacles is so you create a layer of obstacles and then the path planning algorithm included inside the movie is using this cost map to take into account the obstacles that it has to avoid okay so this cost map is like a map on top of the original map but this map contains only the obstacles detected by this cosmat layer. In this case, as you can see in the cosmat common.yam file, you can see it, 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 along all the parameters that are there, you can see that there is one that is called scan, and that says the data type laser scan. And then topic Kabuki laser scan. That means that this cost map for the frontier is going to be created by using the laser, what the laser is detecting as obstacles. So we are going to use that layer. This cost map is the one that the move base is going to use in order to avoid obstacles and to create uh, also in order to create the paths to, to move from, from current location to the goal, to the frontier point that the, the Frontier algorithm has selected. But then we have a second YAM file that is called Cosmac Exploration.yam. And this one is the one that is used for configuring the special options that the Frontier Exploration algorithm needs to be configured. And those options are included here in, in a section that is called Explore Boundary. And there are basically three parameters. One is the resize to boundary, that this is, uh, this is uh, a parameter that uh, it's, so if you put it this uh, to false, then, so, so if you put it to true, sorry, then if you put it to true, when it receives a new polygonal boundary around the which, we want to explore, then it will resize the layer of the cost of the cost map to that boundary only, to that boundary. We have put this into false because we don't want to have the uh, the, uh, the the cost map layer. We don't want to have it just to the size of the polygonal of the exploration area. Sorry, I didn't explain here. I think that sh I should have included before here what is the polygonal boundary of the of the exploration. So when we launch, you are going to see, okay, in a minute, but when we launch this exploration algorithm, you're going to see that we are going to use the Arbis to select a polygonal, a polygon that it's, so we are going to create a polygon area selecting some points and in this area is where the robot is going to explore. Only on this area. Okay? So only in this area is where the robot is going to explore. So we can limit the exploration of the robot 
to just a certain area. And that is very useful because we don't want just the robot to just go away and explore everything and then go out of the door and goes to the street and uh, whatever. So we say only in this area. So that's the polygonal boundary. And we are going to create one. Then we have another parameter that is called the frontier travel point. And there, this is the frontier travel point. It's the point at which when, when the algorithm detects a frontier, that means a set of points that are together, that are open, but the robot cannot know what is after those points because the, the laser scan doesn't reach beyond that. Then that means, oh, it's, for example, imagine in a door, okay, in a door that is open. And then the robot is in this location, but the door is there, so it cannot see what is on the other side of the door, really. So that's, a, that's an area that is open, and that's a frontier. That's a frontier. And in this frontier, we can decide at which point we want to launch the robot, to, to send the robot. And you can uh, decide the point at which to send in three ways. The first one is the closest point to the robot of that frontier. So the closest point to the robot of that frontier, a middle point of the frontier, so the frontier on the middle, or a Cartesian average of all the frontier points. So really, in practice, I don't know which one is the best, really. I don't know. I, I think that you should try for your specific application. In this case, we have just put the middle as the default. Okay, so then also the, the, third, uh, the third parameter is the one that, that is called explore clear space. And then uh, this means that uh, if, uh, if you set to, to true, then the robot is going to explore also areas where there is clear space. So you know, you are going to see on the map that there are two, three types of spaces in the, in the mapping. One is the clear space, is where the robot knows that there is nothing. It's occupied a space when there is something there, it could be an object, a, a, a wall or whatever, a person. And then the unknown space, that's a different color in the map, and is the places where the robot doesn't know what is there, if there is something there. So in this case, we set to false, so the robot is going to take into account only those areas in order to explore. Okay, so it's going to move only for areas where there is unknowns, not only not on areas where there are um, also clear spaces. Okay, the clear spaces could be useful in case that it's a large map and then you you want the robot to explore areas that are clear but that they could change with time so maybe it's clear now but you want to go there and update the map for example so that's very useful in this case we only want to create a map of an environment an unknown environment so that's why we set to false and that's it so for that we need to create for launching the exploration is the exploration launch file that we set on the launch directory and is already there and what it does it contain well it contains uh, the first, uh, the launch of the node Frontier Exploration Explore Client. So the Frontier Exploration comes in two nodes. One is the server, that is the one that does the heavy work. And then the other one is the client, that is the one that is asking the server to do whatever it takes in every moment. So you, you need to launch the two now in order to make it work. So that's what this launch file is doing, launching the, the, the client and the server. That's it. And then it provides as parameters, it provides the cost map and the cost map and the, yeah, the YAM files that we have just explained and that are in the parameter directory. Okay. Then let me see uh, on the chat, uh, RZ just arrived. Hello, RZ. Go, go, go quick, grab the rajet, start, start practicing. Come on, RZ, you are very late. Okay, so then uh, we have another question here from Dilip that says, how this polygon area is given to explore? 
Yes, that's very good. So we are going to see in a minute. We are going to use Arbis to set this polygon. And then the uh, frontier exploration is listening to that topic that we, where we publish those points in the RBS and then creates a polygon when it senses that there is a closed polygon. And once that is being done, then the, the algorithm, the, the frontier exploration, detects that this is the area that we want to use as polygon. And then it starts all the, the whole process. You are going to see in a minute. So now we have this frontier exploration launch. So now up to now we have three launch files, one for gmapping, another one for move base, another one for the exploration. Okay, so we have three. Now what we are going to do is to create a fourth, fourth launch file that is going to launch all of them. Okay, so that's very convenient because by doing this, we have only whenever we want to test or to launch everything, just one launch file. And that's called the main.launch. So if you go to the main dot launch, you will see here on the notebook or on the, the one that is on the on the code already created, you will see that it's run gmapping, calls the gmapping launch file, the move base, the frontier exploration, and then also we have included here the RBS. You know the RBS is the tool in ROS that we use to debug. And also to visualize the status of the robot and the status of the algorithms, or all the ROS nodes that are running in there. So that's how uh, why we are launching here Arbis because we want to see. And also we are launching the Arbis with a very specific configuration file, which is called the Exploration Arbis, and it's uh, there we have included for you. And now, so now let's go. We have, if you have been following, you should have the simulation of the robot. Mine is there. So I can see my robot in my environment. And then you, you also, so it's ready. So we can use the shell, the terminal that we used before to launch this main.launch file. Then for that, uh, create the, so you can copy the, the command that, it is included here on the notebook. It's called the ROS launch, Tartelbot exploration, main.launch. That's the one. So you select the package and you select the launch file. Very good. So let's do it. Okay, let's go. ROS launch, Tartelbot underscore exploration, main.launch. Okay, so this is going to load and do, do this and that. You are going to see on this on the terminal a lot of things that appear there. And it's going to start all the nodes, the G mapping, the move base, the frontier, and the RBIS. And also for the RBIS, it's going to show another window, but you cannot see the window here on this web interface because it's a web interface and that's an application. How can we see this RBIS window? Very easy. We have included here on the tools menu. Go to the menu on the top and say select tools and then select the option graphical tools. So every, every graphical window, extra graphical window that a raw system is creating or, or generating can be seen on this graphical tools option. So click on there. Then you may have a... a, an, a a message that says load graphical tools. If it is this, just click there, load graphical tools. Yes, please load it for me. And then if everything went okay, you should see the screen of Arbis in there. And already you should see there that there is a robot there, a turtle robot, and some parts in, in white some parts in black, some parts in kind of greenish, something like that. So the white ones are the clear spaces. The, uh, the black ones are the ones that are occupied by obstacles. If you can check on the, you, you can check on the gazebo and then you can see that those correspond to these uh, areas in the, that are walls in the, in the uh, simulated environment that the robot is there. 
And then the other ones in green are the ones that we want the robot to explore. Okay, so, and then you can see on the right hand side, on the, on the left hand side, a lot of options. Those have been already configured for you by us in order to show the proper things that we want to show there. Now, let me go to the, sh to the, uh, to, to the chat because Virel has a, a question, says resource not found, talk about navigation. Okay, that's not possible. So you have to have this talk about navigation here. Talk about navigation, let me see. So, um, let me see here. If I go to the IDE, the startable navigation, it's uh, where where is it? This included startable navigation. Uh, we have startable exploration in one of the files. Then startable navigation. Let me see in the move base. Could it be startable navigation? Yes. Find startable navigation. Okay. So you should have startable navigation viral because. Uh, you are just running on the ROS DS. Are you lo loading this in local or in the ROS DS? So you should be running this in ROS DS. Tartable navigation is a package that is provided by ROS uh, and it allows the Tartable to navigate. And then let me see if I have any problem here. Still not finding. Uh, Byrel, give me some feedback in case that. ROS DS, okay. So you should be able to do ROS CD, Tartlebot Navigation. And then you should be brought to our copy of the Tartlebot Navigation, which is in Home Simulations, Public Scene, Workspace, Source, or Tartlebot, Tartlebot Navigation. Do you have that, uh, Byron? So can you type ROS CD? Tartlebot underscore navigation and get brought to this directory, home simulations, public same, whatever. So let me know. In the meantime, for, for the rest of the people, so you are there, now you can start publishing points uh, in order to generate an area where the robot is going to explore. So I cannot show you how to do it here, I'm going to try to explain, but it is uh, shown on the images that are included in the notebook. So what you have to go is to this uh, screen that is called the, the Arbis. And then on the Arbis screen, you will see on the right top corner, there is an option that is called Publish Point. So you should have to click on there, click there, click, and then go to one point of the whatever it, the area is. It is uh, quite interesting if you can do it in a in an area that it's. Uh, let's let's start by creating an area that is a square around the robot. Okay, make it big, like similar to the uh, image that you can see on the on the notebook. Okay, so try to do it like this. So click one point there. Then you go to, again, to publish point. Click another point in another corner of this square. You will see that the line has been created between the two points. Then you go again to the publish point, create another point on the Arbis. Then you should see that you should see that there is a second line okay so so you have uh, Biorel is explaining sorry i'm receiving the messages from Biorel and says ross cd talked about navigation does not work only ross cd talked about exploration that is very very strange can anybody uh, explain me uh, so uh, tell me if you you are having the same problem and um, viral can you do some one thing for me also can you close this terminal this shell and open a new one and then try again 
So maybe there is a problem in the source or... Uh, and then you mentioned that maybe because I have not select the world or robot. No, 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 because this is, these are the packages of ROS. So don't, don't worry. And then uh, uh, there is another question by Dilip that says, we should draw a polygon in white areas only. No, no, no. You should draw in any area. And I mean, it could be the green one, the white one, or the, also you can put it into a, into a black one. Only those areas. Those are the areas that the robot is going to explore. It's allowed to move around. So, and also remember that you have to create a polygon that is a closed form. Okay, so it could be a square, but it could also be an hexagon or pentagon, whatever, whatever you, the figure that you like the most. The easiest one is the, is a square, you know, that's the easiest one. So select, keep selecting points until you close the figure. Okay, so you, I'm creating in my case, so your last point should be the first point that you created. By doing this, the system is going, when you close the, the form, the, the polygon, when you close it, then all the lines that before were in blue, they should change to red. This is indicating, hey, you have closed the loop. So you have a closed polygon, an area where I can explore. Okay, then, uh, then it's uh, um, it's now it's ready to start exploring. And in order to explore, you have to publish a final point. That is, uh, go to publish point and then select a point, an initial point, whatever the point it, inside this area. So the robot is going to take this point as a reference for a start exploring in that area. Now, when you click on there, you will see that this red polygon is disappearing okay and then you only get this red dot on the final point that you have published but if you go to the terminal you will see that the algorithm is running okay and now i ask you to be patient and not to start publishing and putting on this because sorry we are using here a computer with two cpus so uh, it's going a little bit slow okay so you have to be patient but in my case, for example, now it's already moving. So it has generated, I cannot show you, but it's already generating paths. So you should see on Arbis, first, that the robot is moving. Second, that there is a green path showing the trajectory that the robot is using in order to explore. And then you should see also how the robot, the map that is created there is ch changing. It's increasing the area that it's uh, uh, including. But you have to be patient, okay? Because it's going very, very slow on two CPUs. Remember that you can always, if you are doing this on ROS ES, you, you can always uh, get more CPUs at extra cost, okay? So up to here, everything is for free, you know. But if you want to support us and also enhance your work, then you can uh, get extra CPUs by going to your subscription there and your user on ROSDS, it will tell you how to how to get. So you should see the robot moving around on the gazebo and the map being updated. Be patient. Let me check the let me check the the chat here. Then Byrel says it doesn't work. I will try more. Byrel, that's very very strange. Really, really, I cannot believe it. Really, have you copied? this Russia that I mentioned and are you opening it with a gazebo 7 with a gazebo 7 uh, option Ross kinetic gazebo 7 please confirm me those information then here we have Boreth that says that uh, his CPU is running at 100% mine also mine also because I'm using the same thing as as I'm uh, showing for you, because I want to experience the same thing as you are experiencing, so I I can provide you with this feedback of this. So don't worry, but uh, Boreth, tell me, tell me if your robot has moved and your map has changed in some way. Tell me about that. Then in my case, the robot has already explored. 
uh, and it's so uh, let me clarify here dilip says uh, robot is not moving in gazebo after polygon is turned red okay so when polygon turned red you still have to publish an additional point okay so you need to go to publish point click there and then go to one point inside your area that you have selected inside the area and click there okay so, so then your polygon is going to disappear. So now you know that it's moving step by step. And then Viola says that's an opportunity to learn. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I want you to experience the same success as the others. So um, please uh, keep me updated, Viola. And in case that you don't uh, have that working, let, let's chat afterwards. So I, I will be very interested to see why is this happening to you. No, nobody else is reporting it. And at present, I don't know how many people do we have, but anyway. So um, that's it. Basically, that's it. We, we have reached the end of the class. And it was uh, quite a strange class. If, if your robot has stopped moving and exploring, now it's time for you to create another area to explore. That means that all this area has been explored by the robot and it is okay for, for him to learn another area. So create a bigger area if you want. And remember that you don't have to select an area where the robot is inside. That's not necessary. You can select an area. I'm, test, I'm doing that exercise right now while I'm talking. An area that is outside of the, of the, so the robot is not included into that area, then the robot is going to, anyway, is going to explore that area if it is possible for him. Okay? So, um, that's it. Uh, Dilip is, is indicating that it's moving for him. Very good. And then you should see the map is going to take a, a little bit longer, but it should start updating. And that is all for today. Let me know if you have any question there. And in case that uh, you want to really become a master of ROS, a ROS developer, if you want to become a ROS developer, then let me tell you that we have an online academy that is called the Robot Ignite Academy, where we have been uh, creating a method for learning. We call this method the 3070 method. You know why? Because we apply only 30% of the time to learn the theory and um, reading things and seeing things. But the 70% of the time in our academy is about you practicing with the simulated robots that we have on that academy in a web interface similar to the one that you have seen here. So in case that you would like to learn very, very fast uh, about different raw subjects in a very structured manner and practical, check the Robot Ignite Academy. Is there the link on the, on, on the notebook? You can see, or also beneath here on the description of this video. And finally, let me tell you that we have been creating some market merchandise for all the people that are loving to, to program with ROS that want to be ROS developers, really ROS experts. So to identify ourselves with a T-shirt that is called the ROS developers T-shirt. And uh, so I have put there a link there in case that you would like to wear one of those. The, the signs are quite nice and uh, fashion and things like, you know, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit uh, nerd, uh, I would say. Yeah, but what else? So we are roboticists. We like to program. So... We like those kind of t-shirts. Have a look there. And uh, let me see if there is any final question here. Uh, Dilip, he says that the, the map got updated. Very good. So success then. For at least for one person. I'm sorry for Viral. So Viral, I'm going to contact you to see what is happening to you. Because I have your, your email. So we were chatting the two weeks ago. So... Uh, then uh, let me send you an email so we can discuss about this problem there because it's very, very strange. And uh, Buret says, my robot is rotating. Yeah, well, the robot will decide what is the best way to move to one point or to another. And then uh, Jan Spy says, so this polygon gives the area that the robot must go on and explore. Yes, that's right. Exactly. 
Exactly. And then as the robot is moving on this area, it's going to include or into the mapping all the, the knowledge, you know, the map of the, those areas. That's it. Okay, so we are going to stop here. And uh, about the next week is going to be, so we are going to combine the previous live class. If you remember the previous live class, we were launching three robots. We learned how to launch three robots in a single simulation. So we have three robots moving around, doing navigation, each one moving autonomously, independently. And in this class, we have learned how to create, make a robot create a map autonomously. So we can create an area and say, create the map. So what we are going to do is to combine those two things in the next live class. So we are going to launch three robots. Each one is going to, to build its part of the map. And then we are going to combine the maps of every one of those and create a one single map for all of them. That's going to be awesome. It's going to be a, awesome, very good. And also for the other live class, so after two weeks from now, we are going to learn how to launch two armed robots. So we learned previously uh, how to launch in a simulation three real robots moving around. Now we are going to learn how to, move, how to launch two armed robots that uh, use a uh, move it. So everyone can move autonomously in different locations, going to different locations. And this is based on a, on a question that one user has, was uh, this user sent into one of our chats, how to uh, create, actually on the chat of the Ross developers chat, and how to move uh, several armed robots by using MoveIt. So that's motivated by this question. So in case that you have suggestions, questions, you can put it there. You can put it beneath this video on the comments, and we'll be happy to take that into account and create new life classes that interest you and us. So uh, John Spy says, my robot just stands still. And uh, okay, be patient, uh, be patient. And then uh, practice with the selecting the area. So if you're, be patient because it's going very slow, Jan. In case that uh, it just stays there and you see that the algorithm is doing nothing, then select a bigger area and also an area where the robot is not in the inside. So select another area outside where the robot is outside that area. Okay, so then for sure the robot is going to need to move and to go to that area in order to explore. So that's it for today, guys. See you next week. Thank you, Boreth. Thank you, John, Dili, Byrell, and all the people on the chat. I think that uh, we managed to learn a little bit. Next time will be better, I promise. So see you next week. And until then, keep pushing your Ross learning, guys. So now it's time for me to figure out how to close this. Uh, connection because I don't know how to close it. So I completely lost the, the you know, the, the video. So I lost my, so I will need some help here in, in order to go this. Oh, I can see here. Yes. Okay. So let me see. Okay. Thank you, Gianfranco, also, in the meantime, that we are trying to close. And Boreth says that it's 12 a.m. right in Cambodia. This is your class. Oh, I'm honored, Boreth. I'm honored that you took so much dedication and so much pain, let's say, to stay awake for our class. It's my honor, really, and for all the others that have contributed here. So. Boreth said, last class. Okay, your last class, of course. That makes sense. Gianfranco, thank you very much. See you next live class. Yes. And that's it. So what can I tell you? That uh, my coffee is already cold. But anyway, let's have some coffee. And uh, Dilip says that it's 10.34 in India. Also very late and very dedicated guy then, Dilip, there. And Byrell, Byrell, thank you. Yes, I'm going to send you an email, okay? So maybe we can have a meeting, a short meeting on Hangout and uh, see if we can see what is your error. Very, very strange error. Uh, please, guys, give us a thumbs up. 
uh, if you like the class. I mean, if you didn't, you can give us a thumbs down, but then you have to put into the comments why you didn't like it. And that's very useful for us, really. So we like this kind of feedback. So you say, oh, no, very bad, because you couldn't share the screen, because I couldn't understand the English. I couldn't. So whatever is the problem that you find on the live class, so you can, you can give us a thumbs up, no problem, and, but please write a comment beneath telling, telling why. So we want to improve. We want to make those live class more amusing, more entertaining, and also that you can learn more. You can learn more. So any feedback that you can provide us can be of help for us. And I think that at the end, we'll have to close just the computer and disconnect the webcam because this is not uh, working. We are trying to uh, to close, but it's, uh, it's, it's here at the bottom. And we got it. So bye-bye, guys. See you next, next week.